All right, guys, the moment has finally come, drinking weasel poop coffee in the mountains of Vietnam. Bold, brave, and courageous. These are just some of the words Food & Travel Magazine have used to describe my channel. A food channel that's literally not afraid to eat sh Buffalo sh just so- Yeah, thank you. They've like sealed off the intestine. Yes. They, they cut it open yeah. and then it brings all the juices. Yes. Oh. Or to pull bugs out of sh and eat that. I'm gonna just take the fattest one here. It is gooey on the inside. Do you have any ranch dipping sauce? Or like today, drinking coffee from beans that have been out by a weasel. Today you'll learn why Best Ever Food Review Show is bringing the sh content to the internet. Oh, yeah. Aside from being extremely unique, this delicacy is one of the most expensive cups of coffee in the world, coming in at about $1,000 per kilogram. Oh, yeah. When a younger, fatter version of myself first arrived in Saigon in 2016. On this show, I pride myself on sacrificing my stomach so you don't have to. I headed to Benton Market to hunt down this notorious blend. Drinking weasel coffee is a dream to coffee aficionados around the world. And I've come directly to the source. And I don't even like coffee. It's gotta hurt. I was wondering about weasel coffee. Uh, yes, I have here. Despite its unusual production method, AKA coming out of an animal's butt, weasel coffee is among the most expensive in the world. So you should be suspicious when a vendor offers it to you for just a few bucks. In fact, Benton had coffee that came out of all kinds of butts. Not only weasel butts, but also squirrel butts and even elephant butts. This is elephant coffee. Now, what does that mean? Before eat the food, and then eat the coffee meet together. The elephant eats the coffee? Yes, and do out the coffee. And poops it out? Yeah. All right. We're gonna, we're gonna look around a little more, okay? But the more I looked around, the more I realized that some of this unique coffee might not be authentic. Uh, this one are from Nala, Vietnam, the most Halan coffee. So nearly a year and a half later, I finally made it to Dalat for the full-on authentic coffee experience. If we're gonna really experience this unique Vietnamese coffee, we're gonna need something to compare it to. Dalat's subtropical highland climate makes it the most ideal place to grow coffee in Vietnam. We are headed to our cafe right here. But before we jump into this $1,000 coffee, I'm going down the road to see what I can get for about 50 cents. We have entered the cafe and now we're gonna attempt to order. Em, một cafe sữa đá. Hmm? Oh, dang it. I didn't know she was gonna come back with more words. I don't know those words. Ah, here, here, here. So close to like a perfect illusion that I know Vietnamese. Even after France's long occupation in Vietnam, the coffee culture they helped introduce has stuck around, but with the Vietnamese twist. We've got some condensed milk, some ice, everything is in there. It's gonna be potent and super bitter. Let's try it out. For about half a buck, this cafe serves up Fin coffee. Coffee that's been filtered manually using ground beans, hot water, and gravity. Mix that with a heavy dose of sweet condensed milk. Mix it up and let the heart palpitations begin. 90% of the coffee grown in Vietnam is robusta. Thick, syrupy, bitter, powerful coffee. A lot of the coffee you might be used to trying is probably Arabica, which is known for being a bit more smooth, like me. We're gonna give it a try. Ooh. It is a taste sensation. It's good, but it is packed with sugar. So it's creamy, it's sugary. A little bit of residual bitterness in there, but they're trying to fight it as best they can. We're gonna go to another coffee shop. Look, I could just go straight to drinking this shit coffee, but we're trying to make this a 10 minute episode. Now, the next thing I'm showing you, it's super cool. It's interesting to me. I don't know if this is common knowledge or not, but first of all, bam, coffee tree. The coffee bean is not actually a bean. It's a cherry pit, so here, we have the cherries growing on the tree and you can actually eat the fruit and inside is the pit that contains all that beautiful caffeine that keeps the whole world running and operating. So I'm gonna eat the fruit. Oh, it's a little sweet, it's a little tart. There's not a lot of fruit, it's mostly skin. It tastes like if you ate just the skin of an apple. Okay, so then here we have the pit and the pit is what's gonna get roasted. We're gonna go check that out next. Ugh. Let's go. So 
So once all those cherries have been pitted, they're here, they're dried out, they're ready to be roasted. Right here, this is all Arabica that's been grown here in Dilat. Once we have all our beans, we're gonna come into this room where all the sorting happens. And you can see density sorting, size sorting. Do I even need to be here? To, I'm just reading signs at this point. Color sorting. They've sorted between kind of greenish and um, also green. And now here, we need to bring the energy down a little bit. Today I'm gonna have around four or five coffees. I'm gonna be fighting the urge to have an anxiety attack. Behind me, this nice woman is sorting piece by piece, painstakingly choosing the right beans. You're doing great. Oh, it, there was no warning, it just happened. All right, so here it is. It is like a campfire in here. There's just an amazing, gently roasted aroma coming off the beans. One sniff of these coffee fumes and it will increase your SAT score by 100 points. I'm getting the caffeine right from here, I feel like. From here, they're gonna grind it and make a delicious espresso. Let's try that out. Do I take it like a shot of vodka or do I sip it? Uh, depending on you. So some people just... Yeah, some people just drink one. All right, thank you. I'm gonna take a little sip. That's so intensely bitter. All right, I'm just gonna take the shot. Here we go. That's surprisingly smooth. Certainly a lot more smooth than Robusta. I put it off long enough, and so now we are going to try some coffee. Let's do this. We finally arrived here at the cafe. It's beautifully set on the edge of this mountain here, and I'm a little bit nervous. The whole day is built up to this moment, and I have no idea what to expect. Here, to, oh my God, I found a weasel. Okay, let's let's come over here first. Hello. What's your name? My name is John. It's nice to meet you. It's good that you already have a microphone on. I heard this is the most expensive coffee in Vietnam. Is that true? Yes, it is. To make one cup of coffee here, we use at least 10 grams of coffee beans, and that will be 200,000. Oh my God. So that's about $10 per cup. I saw there was a big cat in that cage. What's that for? We feed her normal type of food, like chicken soup, banana, or steamed rice. Normal type of food, guys. This is what they eat in the wild is chicken soup. This is big. Can I hold it? No, you cannot. Okay, fine. 200 weasels live on this farm, and each day they're fed the finest Arabica coffee cherries. But how does this affect the flavor in the end? The first thing about weasel coffee is about selection. We select the good berries from the trees, and then we feed them, and then the weasel will select by themselves against the mm. best coffee berries to eat. And when they eat, they're very clever. They're gonna just spit out a red skin here on the floor because the skin is not sweet. Mm. And then after that, they will swallow the whole beans here. There are two beans in one. Inside the weasel stomach, there's a really good enzyme and that kind of enzyme can change the taste of the coffee. It gets the coffee being somehow like uh, less bitterness, more sweetness, and have a special flavor. Natural sweetness, yes. less bitterness, and yeah. just a smooth, poopy experience. Yes. Oh, so they're not in these cages. They are free inside this area. You can see they're sleeping inside. Is it okay to go inside? Yes. They are wild animals, so they're quite aggressive. You need to keep a little distance to the weasels. But I'm just gonna hug, I'm just gonna hug them. But otherwise, that's all. We're gonna be careful. She said only hug one or two at most. Okay, this is like a decompression chamber here. Kind of interrupting them because they're sleeping. Yeah. Is that, is that the poop? Yes. That's the poop from the weasels. Oh, yo! Or you can see a lot of coffee beans here, or here, or here, you see? When people hear poop coffee, they have the wrong idea. They might think there's actual poop in the coffee. Turns out, no. After the droppings are collected, they're fermented for six months before being cleaned and roasted. I'm understanding the price more and more. Like, not only are the animals eating it, but they're also fermenting it for six months. That's really interesting. At last, my knowledgeable coffee guide throws together a cup using some basic kitchen supplies and maybe science equipment too? We are on this beautiful mountainside. We have our coffee here. I didn't know what to expect when we came. I didn't know if they're gonna be mixing it with all kinds of other stuff, but no. And here it is, 10 bucks for this cup of coffee. You gotta drink it while it's hot. Let's do it. Mmm. Okay, no poop flavor at all. It tastes exactly like coffee. Mmm, it's smooth, it's just, it's a little bitter, and it's way better than instant coffee, I'll tell you that. Each, literally, each sip, that was one dollar. 
That was another dollar. I could have drank four beers for those two sips. Oh, and I love beer. I don't notice a $10 difference from just kind of a normal Arabica kind of coffee. <laughs> now I want to make other people taste it. Do we have, but I don't know if we have budget. I mean, do we have budget for that, for other people to taste it? Okay, we can't have other people taste it. I think if you're gonna come here for the poop coffee, it's about the experience. It's about being in the mountains, having the cool air brush past you as you relax on the mountainside. It's about seeing the beautiful wild animals in their cages sleeping during the day like some lazy bones, but they're actually just nocturnal. It's about seeing the crazy coffee siphon method of preparation. And at the end of the day, it's really about sharing a warm cup of coffee with your friends. And you guys are my friends, you're my besties. Thank you for being here today. Before we go, I do wanna say, let me tell you about a company called One Trip. These videos are made possible by One Trip. One Trip is a company putting on tours throughout Vietnam, in Saigon, Da Nang, and Hoi An. You can go on food tours, adventure tours, village tours, or my personal favorite, the Mekong Delta Tour. For more information on One Trip, check out the links in the description down below. I'm gonna see you next week. A peace. <laughs>